know, how can we get the, the best of future generations to commit themselves to living for our country by serving in the public sector? Well, part of the answer, I believe, is that we must build a flagship institution for public leadership in this country, the way we have a flagship institution for military leadership. Right? We have West Point, but we don't have a civilian counterpart. We need a, a symbolic institution that sends a powerful message about the importance of, young of, of public service and getting young people into public service, how important that is to the, the vitality and prosperity of our nation. We need a, a bold institution that taps into the patriotic spirit of our young people and channels their energy into public service. So Sean and I are working to build that institution, which we call the Public Service Academy. It will be the civilian counterpart to the military service academies, kind of like West Point, but without the guns. <laughs> now, I could talk all day about the academy, and sometimes I actually have talked all day, I promise you, about the academy, but I, but I, but I promised Howard that I would not. So I'll keep, it, I'll keep it relatively short, but here's the idea in a nutshell. The Public Service Academy would realize George Washington's dream of a national civilian college. It would offer more than 5,000 students an intensive undergraduate education focused on leadership development and public service. And like their military academy peers, academy students would receive full scholarships that would cover all their expenses during their four undergraduate years. In return, they would commit to spending five years serving their nation by working in public institutions in healthcare, education, law enforcement, emergency management, and other essential civilian fields at the local, state, and national levels. They would be sent to serve where they're needed the most just as a West Point graduate is. The Academy would be a highly visible national institution that will raise the prestige of public service. It would be like the Peace Corps in the 1960s. It, it, it has the power to capture the imagination of a new generation of young people. And it will change how young Americans perceive, prepare for, and pursue public service. It might even, dare we say, make public service cool again. So, Sean and I, about two years ago, we began sending our little proposal out to anyone we could think of. You know, friends, family, old professors, rich folks, Oprah. <laughs> Still haven't heard back from Oprah. But, uh, you know, we didn't have a PR firm or lobbyists or budget or anything. We still don't. But we do have the passion to pursue an idea that we believe in. And you know what? That idea has already started to capture the imagination of folks across the political spectrum. We have a bill in Congress, the U.S. Public Service Academy Act. It was introduced in both the Senate and the House of Representatives last March. It now has more than 110 co-sponsors from both parties. Two presidential candidates have endorsed the idea, along with college presidents, labor unions, service organizations, even three past superintendents of West Point. Perhaps most exciting, we've, we've attracted the support the enthusiastic support of young people, especially college students, who are fired up about being on the ground floor as we build the next great American institution. And I think the Academy has caught on because so many people, particularly in this 9-11 generation, they want to be part of something larger than themselves. They, they want to do something real with their lives. They want to live for our country. And these are powerful and exciting desires, and we as a nation would do well to cultivate them. Because we need more young people to see service, whether military or civilian, as a way of life. We need more of you to get fired up about what you believe in, the way the famed abolitionist William Lloyd Garrison was fired up. As he once said, I have need to be all on fire because I have mountains of ice about me to melt. I have need to be all on fire because I have mountains of ice about me to melt. Mountains of ice, and we all have mountains of ice about us to melt. We have the ice of cynicism and, and hostility and greed. We have, we have the ice of, of, of cowardice and, and apathy and fear. We have the ice of, of prejudice and insecurity and hate. And these mountains exist not only all about us, but also within us. And we can melt them with our passion, and our idealism, our spirit, our patriotism. Now, whether you become community leaders or social entrepreneurs or public servants, we need you to help us, in Abraham Lincoln's words, to strive on to finish this work that we are in, the work of making America live up to its promise. We need you to live for our country. Thanks.
Thank you very much, Dr. Ash. We will now have the opportunity to take questions. Please introduce yourself and ask your question. Thank you very much. Sir, Katie Traster from the Naval Academy. Hi. Um, I was just wondering, at all four service academies, Army, Navy, Air Force, and Coast Guard, they have- Don't forget the Merchant Marines. Marine. Yeah, Merchant Marines, mm -hmm. sorry. They have um, a summer program mm -hmm. so that you know midshipmen and cadets alike can go out into the real world uh, for their different services and see what it's like. Um, would the Public Service Academy do the same thing with like a summer program? Absolutely. I, I, again, we want to follow the model of the military academies um, from everything from the congressional appointment process through through the placement process. And, and one of the key things that the, the academies do very well is they have a year-round leadership development program. I mean, I mean, you don't get a whole lot of rest. You know, while your college buddies are, you know, chilling uh, in the summertime, you don't get a whole lot of rest. But that's part of what makes it so special. It's part of what, what why academy graduates are, are, are cut above in terms of leadership when they graduate. And so we certainly would want to provide that same kind of year-round program. And a lot of the, the most important leadership activities take place off campus. You have to go out and get that experience. So yes, we want to have not only internships in, in public service agencies and, and community organizations, but we want our students to actually spend a, a quarter. We, we, we envision having a quarter system to spend a quarter or even an entire uh, summer in the military, not as not doing basic training and not training as in, in the military, but to serve as civilians within the military so that, that they can get a sense of the role that the military plays in our in our public sector and in our public life. And so absolutely, we want them to get off campus to see the world as it is so that they'll be able to change the world when they're ready. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Thanks. And thank you for your, your service. I know it's not easy. Hello. Hi. Uh, my name is Kara, and I'm an agriculture economics major from Prairie View a and University. Mm -hmm. And I have a comment as opposed to a question. OK. Um, I've actually been on both sides of the spectrum. Uh, my freshman year, I interned with the United States Department of Agriculture, the Food Nutrition Service Agency. Mm -hmm. And then last summer, I interned with an uh, agricultural company named Monsanto. Mm -hmm. And um, I got to you know see the public service and the private sector side. And the private sector side does seem more appealing, but I just wanted to let you know that you really put it in perspective today that service is greater than any amount of money or whatever kind of benefits you can get from the private sector. And what you just told me today has really inspired me to really be a part of the public service sector. So I just wanted to tell you oh, that. Thank, thank you. Thank, thank you. It's so important. It's good, good to hear. 